Hey guys, what's up? All right, all right, all right. It's Double Deuce back. Today we're going to do a comparison of the Aussie Clone V8 that's supercharged to the Sisson V8. I was going to include another V8, but since half of them don't start, eh, I don't know. We won't go there yet. But right now we're going to do these two, and I'm going to throw this thing start. Grab your favorite smoke and beverage and popcorn and hang out with Double Deuce today. Okay, welcome back everybody. Oh, so, I've had many requests on uh, size comparison and my thoughts on the two engines, okay? Um, we got the Sisson 440 V8. Um, highly detailed, super scale, nice lumpy idle good rev capability, um, very tunable. Everything is tunable on this engine. And we got the Aussie V8. Um, about a Gino more for the kit. Um, it does have roller rockers. And you'll see the size is monstrous. This is actually a quarter scale V8. Um, they say the Sisson is a 1 6 scale. But it looks a little big for a 1.6 scale in my opinion. Uh, I have a couple of 1.6 scale bodies and I put it in there and it's just, mm, just a little too big so it's a little bigger than 1.6 scale. However, the benefits outweigh the size, I'll put it that way. The detail on this block is crazy. Um, the supercharger on this is crazy, you know. This one actually surges when it idles. This has glow plugs. It does not have an ignition system. It's just, you know, your igniters, glow plugs, and, you know, airplane fuel, 20%, 30%, whatever. And, you know, it's, it's cool. It does have a lot of power. Don't get me wrong. But it's limited, I guess, with... Um, it seems like these are getting phased out, you know. So if you get a chance to find one of these, you really want one, just do it, you know. Um, I built mine piece by piece, hand by, you know, everything by hand, you know. And it was cool. And, but I don't know if the reliability is there yet. Because I've already blown some rods out of it. And a couple of weird things that went on here from, some of them were my fault, some were production fault. But overall, it's a really good engine. <clears throat> Ed Nunn in his Corvettes is really done a lot with these engines so if you check out his channel uh, the mini car you're gonna see a lot of these there in his Corvettes so now I'm gonna focus on the Sisson V8 this thing is just I've, I've spent an extended honeymoon with this thing oh my god I'm in love with it and it's just uh, it's really cool you know it starts every single time without a problem and I'll get to some of the quirks that I found out about this engine and uh, some of the add-ons like a clutch that's important so first off we'll start with the carburetor settings they're very very fragile and when you move these just a little bit it makes a big change in this engine and uh, you know if you get a nice tight gasket set where everything's super tight it's, it's gonna you're gonna feel it right away just by moving your low end or your high end just a little bit I mean like a fraction of a turn you're gonna see great results or horrible results and um, and the distributor in the thing I did what I've noticed with everybody who's got these things fine-tuned these spark plug wires they go on the distributor cap. The boots are too, too long. You have to cut these back just a little bit to bring that wire close to that little terminal there. And uh, you know, it's there's a lot to 
consider when you're building an engine. This is just like building a real scale engine. And that's what I love about it. It's got an oil pump, oil filter. Um, the, the system clutch for the flathead L400 will not fit because the bolts are just, the holes are just a little off. But it you can adapt it if you just drill bigger holes in the middle, you know. So that won't be a problem either. And uh, I'm having a couple of oil leaks in mine, mainly around the intake gaskets and the distributor shaft in the front right here. I'm getting a lot of seepage down there. But other than that, um, you play with the tuning, you get your carb set get a nice lumpy idle um, and you'll get some good RPMs too and they need to be broken in properly um, I see a lot of guys start these things up and they're just it won't run I can't do this the first thing they start doing is messing with the distributor and the carburetor don't do that let it run in crank your idle up a little bit let everything seat together it's gonna get hot don't be scared and uh, you know, it's just, it's that simple. Just be patient. Now, I've adapted mine to one 11.1 volt battery. And you'll see it right here. It does ignition and the start at the same time. And we'll fire it up quickly. Very quick. Now, this is a cold start. When you start fine tuning it, it's called tune by ear and stroke by hand. It's an old hot rodders thing that I have it's been instilled in my blood forever. And uh, that's how you win races on Saturday night. So any questions, comments, feel free to hit me up. Um, I will go through the firing order real quick too. It's 1843-6572 on your cap. It is marked 1843-6572 in a clockwise rotation. This is your odd bank, 1357. This is your even bank, 2468. So put your wires on accordingly. Make sure you trim down your boots. And, uh, and maybe not put the boots on the plugs right away. Just use the little uh, clear silicone tube and just a little bit of uh, fuel hose. That way there you can watch the spark. Because when I did that, I first noticed that I had three cylinders not firing. And uh, it was all because the boots are too long here, so. Anyways guys, love to all. Like, share, subscribe if you want, and I'll catch you later, man. Adios.